Hey everybody, welcome to uh, another great adventure with uh, Derek T. Stevens, the man, the myth, the legend, next to me in spirit and in pony fun and fashion, uh, Mr. Nelson. As you all know, um, we had a huge meeting um, with 3D Buzz. I can't even remember what day it is. Seriously, it was a blur, Nelson. I had a great time. Great, great time. Can't wait to get back and do lots and lots of fun stuff. Um, Real quick, how many people do we have in class at the moment? Um, at this moment, we have seven. All right, seven, probably the hardcore mofros, and I appreciate you. Uh, what I want to say is I apologize because we did switch class days. I had every intention of driving home after only two to three hours of sleep, seven hours home, getting some preliminary sketches done for the class, which I, I kind of did, and then soldiering through to teach a class last night. I was dead to the world. I miss my wife and my kids. I spent some time with them, and uh, I'm like, Nelson, please, can we switch it to tomorrow? And Mr. Nelson was very cool with doing that, and I really appreciate everybody here. Uh, I hope it didn't inconvenience you too bad. So thank you very much. Next week, we will we'll do it the normal scheduled time. So that's good. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the meeting. Uh, whenever we took all the artwork in to the Buzz Cave, Buzz like, I don't want to see any of it. I don't want to see any of it. I want to be a surprise for the meeting. Uh, so a couple of days went by, and we, we got the meeting, and uh, we were talking about everything, and he just, with the original Elysian story, which I'm not super familiar with, he was blown away as Mr. Ray's rendition of where it's heading, the possibilities. He just loved it. So we have a definite direction we are going. It is locked in. Mr. Ray is fantastic, fabulous, uh, just awesome. I use that word way too much, but the only way to describe it is awesome. Um, then uh, we start talking about art. He was very pleased uh, about getting rid of the hinged legs. I'm very pleased that he is pleased about getting rid of the hinged legs because I'm not super happy with the hinged legs. Um, the environments. He was blown away by all the environments. Uh, he couldn't believe that we already had a, a static mesh of an Aletheian. Uh, Ray and William, I believe, did uh, one as well. It's rigged and ready to move today, and hopefully we'll take your screen so they can show us what they got. Um, it's not the final rendition, uh, but it's kind of like a work in progress, uh, proof of concept, if you will. So we start talking about, okay, we have all these grandiose type sort of, uh, I guess, environments, and Buzz is a huge, huge wow guy. I mean, he is a numbers cruncher where I was a role player, so it was really cool to, to both of us to be able to mesh because I'm very much story-driven, and he's very much number-driven and really is the best of both worlds. Um, so we start talking about more and more environments, and Buzz was like, well, hey, in this, this quest, you know, you have a castle here, you've got this, this, and so he laid out several things that uh, he wants Steve and his team to work on, and right now, Mr. Steve is on his way home from work, so he cannot be here, so we will not dwell too much on environment art. Uh, right now, we're going to be tasked with uh, armor, armor for our Alethians. So right now, uh, I want to volunteer. I need to, to be able to chat back and forth with somebody about some armor ideas. Whoever is wanting to volunteer, let me hear you now or raise your hand. So, uh, Or if there's any questions about the meeting, I'd like to be able to you know, talk about that a little bit more as well. So, Mr. Nelson, do we have any volunteers? I'm waiting for a hand. There are no hands. Nobody has a hand. Come on, people. I need one of you. Nope. We got a Eve. Eve. Bring Eve on here. My Lipschen. Hey there. Hey. Guten Tag. Was machst du? Ich bin sehr schade. Du bist sehr schade. Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? Not doing too good. Kind of bad. A little tired. I don't know how to say hungover. Schade, if that was bad in German. Uh, schlecht. No, not really. Yeah, I uh, feel me schlecht. Oder ich bin müde. I'm tired. Schade is more like pity. Schade well, that, that's, that's it's not geklappt hat. Uh, it's a pity it didn't work out. Okay, you can you can pity me for right now. I'll deal with that. How's that? Hey, uh, man, I really wish you were there. Um, they Buzz love the baby ideas, love those those eyes, and he loves the idea of the races having basically the same body types, but the subtle differences with the ears and the feathers. I mean, we got a work cut out for us. It's going to be great. So right now, I want to, I want to talk about some armor ideas. Okay. And hold on, let me 
Oops. Let me get to the right layer, right? Hold on. Books, books, books. All right. Back to this proper layer. So um, what kind of armor are you thinking of there, Eve? I mean, we just got a baseline Aletheian here. Um, I've been looking at a lot of medieval stuff here this morning. Some of the stuff I've been doing for Heavy Cat, it's been all medieval card games. So I had, anyway, looking for all that stuff. And I'm thinking for uh, some of the clans or, or, or tribes, we can kind of do that medieval look. Um, what type of armors are we wanting? Leather, maybe some uh, metal or stone. Uh, let's just do a fighter right now, a heavy fighter. What do you think about that? Well, I would say, uh, depending, of course, on the classes, um, uh, not just the tribes, but the class um, uh, that you want to play, the armor types should be different, of course. A heavy fighter would have, for example, heavy plate, and a ranger or a sorcerer would have maybe cloth or um, leather armor. And, um, yeah... But I think medieval or something um, uh, more in folk style, medieval mix of, of that, because even though they have um, technology through those crystals, um, basically they don't re really need real science. They can still live in villages because those um, stones basically do their work for them. The science stuff, like uh, we uh, talked about, for example, um, a reactor for generating lights and electricity. We as humans need uh, that kind of science. They have those crystals, so they basically don't need, uh, they wouldn't necessarily have, um, well, that high-tech gear or clothing. They wouldn't really need to progress past that, right? Is that what you're trying mm -hmm. to say? I kind of, uh, I would concur. So let's do something. Let's start with the head. How about that? Here's what I'm thinking of the head. So this is kind of a drawing and idea phase. Um, again, it's in lithium. I think it's 300 DPI, two, uh, 20 by 20 is what I'm working on. I have a background layer locked, so I made another layer here. So I can literally just not mess up like that. Hold on, Control Z. <laughs> Come on, help me out. Work, work with me. Let's try edit. Step back. Okay. And I'll bring my opacity down a little bit. And, of course, our eye range, their eye range, is very similar to ours. And I really like the idea. Hold on, my computer's doing stupid stuff. Let's do the opacity up a little bit more than that. I kind of like the idea of, because the elongated head. Yeah. Maybe flaring out something like this that can kind of cover it. And instead of doing these, well, again, these are just rough ideas. And we have to draw them in perspective and all that, too. And then, I mean, you can have stones and stuff laid through the, the helmet through here on either side. And again, kind of keeping with the sweeping flare here, so it's straight across, bringing it out like this. You have some sort of ornamental areas right through here, and more of the plates. And then for the neck, I know the, they want the necks to move and stuff, like you said, for fighters, because I think a weak point could also be the neck, because they utilize it a lot. Maybe you have some sort of armor that comes up through here like this, because I'm going for the spiky sort of look anyway. Oops. And we can kind of attach something through here. And then continuing with the, the sweeping idea like this, come back for plates. We'll do three. Three, three is my favorite number. So we're going to do little threes like this. One, two. And then the third one, and we'll do the same thing over here. One, two, this three is where it's at, mama. Three number like that. Of course, when you add shading and all that, what do you think of something like that? It's very Warcraft-like. It is. And, oh, that's the other thing. I want to 
I guess tell everybody. And that is the game we're going for. Uh, a Warcraft, not a, a League of Legends, but a Warcraft game where you'll see where you're Lethian and then have a camera setting where you can zoom all the way to it and then have like a first person shot running around and zoom the camera way, way back so you can see your dude or dudette running around. So uh, now we don't have to keep it to a Warcraft thing, but uh, for heavy plate, tell you what, do you, do you have a screen? Do you have a, a template like that so you can draw a couple things, some of your ideas? Uh, I can make a template. Why don't you make a template real quick, and I'll just I'll finish this armor, my idea of this armor out, while you get your template sorted up. How's that? Okay. Um, it looks like uh, Wolf has a few ideas as well, if you want me to bring him on the call. Yeah, please do. Hello? Hey, man, how you doing, dude? Doing all right. How are you doing? You sick? I'm just a little bit. <laughs> oh, just tired, more tired? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll call it tired. How's that? I'm making uh, it. Not hungover at all. At all. Uh, I did try to work out this morning, and that was not very pretty, but I, I did get a small workout in. I, I think it's just, I miss everybody there. And, and pity was the great word to say it. I, I, I was around great artists all for like four days. And, you know, you come home. And I actually have all my art stuff set up. My wife was awesome enough to do all that stuff for me while I was gone. You know, I come back into my studio, and everybody's gone. After being around 10 people for four days, and, and the magical part about the whole 3D buzz thing was, I mean, we, we did work. We did a lot of work, a lot of photo stuff, and we talked about the games and start break down comic books. But at night, we, there was a couple smokers there. They go out in the patio. We, we drink an adult beverage and just visit, come back and work, come back out. But, you know, it's that interaction that uh, I miss. Even, even Ty, who's not here. Loved him to death. He's a great kid. Had some really good ideas. He and I started discussing some stuff about the human area. And there is a very intelligent and beautiful young lady named uh, Lace who uh, does a lot of photo shoots for uh, Buzz. And Steve and I were talking already for the human side. I know, it's, I know it's a little bit early for the human side, but I want an iconic figure to lead. And I'm going to base the leader off Lace, because I'm already thinking conventions and posters, and we have a, a built-in model. And she's a tough chick, man. Uh, she's like, model thin, but I would not want to piss her off. And that's exactly the attitude I want for our leader. Um, and so Steve and I are talking, well, is she going to be evil? Is she going to be good? And then we came up with the concept, I guess it's really point of view, because according to Ray's story in Backhark, you know, she's going to leave her people here. It's not of evil intent. But uh, she does want the resources back to save her people. And, of right. course, that's not evil if you're human. It is evil if you are an Aletheian. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm excited about that. So uh, That's cool. Sounds fun. It was really fun. And coming up with some more ideas. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, I was kind of thinking more like uh, ancient Greek. Like kinda, you, you saw the movie Troy? Oh yeah, I love Troy. Just kind of, kind of a, a little bit of a less is more, uh, kind of a thing. And I mean, they had, uh, uh, let's see, the arm braces or uh, no, I can't think of. I'm sure there's a. a <laughs> Let's finish word. this heavy fighter real quick. Help me on this one, and then okay. we'll do another template, and we'll do uh, kind of your idea too, because <laughs> dude, right now. Part of the arms and chest are exposed, and I guess we can put some little braces right through here, here and here. And I like the idea. Oops, I don't like that idea. The gloves, where we have something kind of aggressive up through here where he can still wield a weapon, but he can also use his claws and this for a back and forward motion sort of thing. You know, the classic place for the legs. The one thing I really want to avoid is really big, chunky parts for the legs. I think these guys are leaning fast, so we wouldn't really need something like that. And then leave the feet. We leave the feet exposed a little bit, I guess. So uh, I hate the helmet right there the way I rendered it, but that was a, it's, I think it's a good idea. That doesn't really work. So that's my idea for like the heavy type 
plate guy made of armor. So what are you thinking, Wolf? Uh, uh, as far as commentary on what you did? Yeah. I mean, does it make sense if you're going to be a heavy fighter? Yeah, it makes sense as a fighter. It, he's not wearing um, any kind of uh, uh, torso. Well, right through here, I figured it could be, like, banded. So you can really see the nice form, and all this other armor would really stick out for a silhouette. Again, the Elysians have a very unique body type. But from a distance, with all these spikes around it, you can tell automatically, you know, it's a good read. This is a fighter. Look at his armor. Not cloth. No hoods, you know, no capes. It's down to business. What 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 is the thing between his chest right there, the diamond shirt? It could be a stone holder where his soul stone stones at. Armor uh, for uh, that. Uh, oh, okay. Right through here, and this is some sort of like belt looking thing. Yeah, I, I was thinking that that could be actually be protective armor. If you're going to do that, it wouldn't be on a string. It would be there would be like kind of a thick plate uh, yeah, let, me do, let me do that this yep. whole area right here would be armor then yeah you could you could do that as well I, I you, but you could also you could do it um, not going down so much like uh, kind of where I mean think of it more like a a, a necklace except like a, a thick a thicker um, protective necklace <laughs> So that, if that makes any sense. It does. And what I'm doing right here is actually showing where the skin values w would show up on this guy. We'll have to do a crotch little plate here because we don't want to be hitting the crotch because that would really hurt. But yeah, that looks like he could uh, he can bend and uh, and move around. Right. So, so that's, that's what I really, really want. Um, Technically, I guess this would be Skinner in through here as well, you know, for his eyes. And like I said, the soul stone, this is not skin, but would be encased in some sort of armament around here. That's form-fitting. And my idea for the armor, we were talking a little bit about it. Actually, Lace brought the idea up. I'm really wanting to bring Lace, and Sid should be in here momentarily. Lace's background is fashion, and she, she knows a lot about about medieval stuff. So I'm hoping to be able to bring her in some point in time and talk about not only fashion for the Elysians and humans, but different armor types. Because, uh, I mean, she's a gamer, um, an Xbox gamer, but she's never played it at MMO. And it'll be an interesting fashion, because I don't know a lot about fashion. I know how to make women look, don't get me wrong by this word, but, you know, slutty, you know, from doing their comic books. You, they don't have a lot of armor on on purpose because you want them to look hot and you want preteens to oh I love this I want to buy it but as far as functionality and fashion that's what I'm hoping to bring someone a little bit more knowledgeable than myself in so um, anyway this is just a quick idea of what maybe a heavy armor guy would look like and Sydney's here by the way She's... oh hey Sid she, uh, oh Sid's not on 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 hey Nelson yeah, can, you bring, can you bring Sid on vocally Your life, Sid. Hey, Sid. Hello. Hello, you hot mama with a uh, the great eye for capturing Hello? people in stupid uh, squirrel suits. Can you hear me? Oh, Derek, it was so nice to have you down in the 3D buzz. You're so awesome. Just like everybody said you were. Well, thank you very much, Sid. Nelson, she can't hear us. <laughs> can she not well, I can't hear, her. hear us, or can we just not hear her? I'm not for sure. Uh, Wolf will entertain all of us. Okay, Wolf, back to your ideas while she's getting sorted out. And Eve should be back momentarily. Uh, oh, I was... Time. Oh, you're here? Okay. I'm just listening and um, sketching something really quick uh, to show you guys. Okay. Let's go ahead and do Wolf's idea. Let me take away this layer. Again, there's nothing really set, but I, I like what Wolf said. It looks like a guy can bend, and that's what we want him to do. Or my idea, even with a heavy fighter, I want these guys to use their agility. I mean, why do you encase yourself in something and take away one of the greatest attributes that you have? Can we agree with that? Right. That's, that's kind of what I was thinking about uh, the 
ancient Greek type of um, where they, they just have placement I mean, they have the um, the torso piece and and they have uh, like hold on, uh, arm braces and uh, I'm not sure if they I can't think if they have uh, any leg braces I think that yeah they have leg braces right so it's, it's almost I mean you could also go um, the barbarian uh, I got some cool pictures route. up through here. Mm -hmm. Can you see these? Yeah. Are you talking maybe something like this? Yeah. I mean, you could do you could do something like like that. But I mean, if you the the idea is, it, I mean, it doesn't. It's not like uh, the full body armor of uh, medieval knights, like jousting or whatever. Right. I mean, maybe there's a time and place for that for a tournament, but I just I can't really see the Elethians wearing stuff like that. So what do you think, Eve? Let's go ahead and we'll play around with this and let me know when you're ready, okay? I have something similar, a mix of both, if you will. Okay. I was also thinking that uh, I, I'm not sure that they really need a helmet because it seems like uh, the style for their head it's kind of a natural uh, armor um, on the top of their head uh, although uh, it's hard to they draw need a face plate what it's She's hard to draw we could uh, some masks maybe uh, where yeah. the head would be um, open I like that idea. And again, because remember, we're doing an MMO, and, and Eve knows all about MMOs. You want to show off your armor and all that stuff. All right, are we mm -hmm. jumping into Eve's screen? Are you ready, Eve? Yeah. Okay, let's oh, jump into Eve's screen. Also, I, I mean, the women don't have that kind of head thing, so maybe women have uh, we are. helmets. What about helmets? Because usually when there's a screen switch, uh, part of the... Oh, I, I, was, I was just saying that uh, the women have... And we lost the different head shapes. They have a smoother... Uh, women would have uh, helmets. Right. I agree. But well, we can't agree. This is nice, especially on the spot. Thanks. Basically, um, get a lot of references um, I can go to, because uh, basically I, I know Warcraft, but I'm not a big fan of their style. But um, like I said, I play Final Fantasy, I play Guild Wars, and um, Age of Conan, which has many of those kind of uh, Boris Vallejo style um, armor, and yeah. So it's right. basically more a more mix of of the both with those uh, big shoulder plates, but um, um, uh, a, a bit ah, I'm missing the word a derivation uh, on uh, on this Roman uh, ones. I even think thought that maybe uh, they are, they have made some kind of subliga with uh, braces, not just on their um, on their shins, but on their upper legs, maybe. Yeah. Instead of full plate. I like that idea. I like the spikes on the the, the wrist. And I'm very pleased it's not a full, like you said, I really want to have variety uh, for men and women uh, in, in armament. So, you know, people can either earn them or through microtransactions or, or a mix of both. But I like how this one is rounded compared to mine is like all spiky and very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Ahead. I, I go think ahead, guard when I see this for some reason. Yeah, kind of, but um, that's more uh, defined by the basic um, uh, drawing I made for for the uh, for the males because um, Derek said we had too little for the presentation. It uh, wasn't ready, so I kind of cheated. That's my homework for uh, tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that me, uh, class, but uh, yeah. You're not cheating. You're smart. Kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. You're not cheating. Kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah. this was uh, my idea, too. So uh, that's basically why um, 
uh, he looks like he looks the form was uh, kind of predefined by um, the drawing for, for the anatomy class. Uh, not bad I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going on. It, it looks like he's wearing a hat. I, it, I almost think it's almost British or something. Uh, no, I thought uh, um, that uh, those may because we have dragons, that those may be uh, some kind of horns, and that could be kind of uh, maybe a dragon's skull. Made oh, nice! I see where you're going with that. Uh, for a, for a helmet. And look at you use different colors like that. Way you're going to be a great teacher one of these days. We'll, we'll get you involved. Thanks. You know, the other thing we can explore, and I remember Mr. Ray says these dragons are intelligent. Are we going to have dragon armor? I mean, would it be a place literally like we have cows, domesticated dragons we raise to eat and to skin for their armor? And how pissed off would the dragons be if we do that? Because I don't know of any, any MMO that has like a dragon farm. I don't know if it's a dumb idea. You just have to go out and kill dragons and make armor like that as well. Yeah, I basically thought um, that maybe, well, you go to the cave, you slay the dragon, you get the reward. Or make uh, get, For example, in Skyrim, when you kill a dragon, you get uh, the scales and the bones. And when you're good at crafting, you can make your own um, dragon armor. Yeah, I love Skyrim just because of that fact, actually. I think uh, Ray was thinking more there that uh, there would be more of our, our mounts and we would respect them or something, but I have no problem with the idea. Just so. Well, you know, though, in all seriousness, they don't, maybe, maybe they're all good. Some, some are evil, and then, you know, We'll have to slay them. Do you, think the, do you think the, the humans are going to respect that? Not really. Probably not. Um, and it doesn't right, even have to be a, a dragon, for example, when you have uh, for the fauna maybe giant snakes. A basilisk basically is a, is a form of a medieval dragon as well, but he doesn't have any arms or legs, um, so it doesn't have to be basically those classical European dragons that are, those are intelligent, we don't right. hunt those, but uh, there could be other uh, kinds of dragon-like um, animals that uh, they could basically um, hunt and farm for, uh, for craftable material. Ray says uh, dragons hate humans, they tried to exterminate them. <laughs> and Mr. Yeah, okay. um, Mr. Ray is, is asking for voice. Oh, please. Oh, okay. I didn't know he was here. Yes, please let him have voice. Am I on? You are on, baby. Ah, yeah, I, I sort of figured that the Alethians and the dragons had a bond, and the humans were the dragon's enemies, and that's why the Alethians took all of the dragons back to Alethia in our ancient history. And that they get along pretty well as mounts, and uh, they would probably fight with the Alethians against the humans. It, we, that, that's not stone or anything, but that's what I had in mind. Living that's, tanks. That would be cool. I mean, uh, Hannibal used elephants, so why exactly. can't we use dragons? Um, can you take my screen again, Mr. Nelson, while she's working on this? Yeah. Show my screen. Okay, here we go. No worries. Uh, okay, here we go. I, I did a couple of creatures, and uh, Chelsea's done a couple of dragons in the past. Now, this is dragon-esque, but like kind of a dog-looking creature. Uh, and we're definitely going to have to start talking about creatures in the near future. So let's keep that in mind. But something like this, I mean, literally, I, I put pieces on it so we can break it apart and use it for armor as well. Again, uh, this is very aggressive and spiky looking, so it might be pretty good to, to be able to do stuff like that. I'd love to see in gameplay a correlation 
and with this sort of armor to some of the creatures out there. Just a thought. What do you think, Mr. Ray? Oh, yeah. Well, we should have lots of, of interesting creatures in the game, if possible. Uh, obviously, when we start out, uh, there are a limited amount of assets that they'll have available, but as you go along, you can be adding more and more things, dragons and other kinds of beasts and uh, hive creatures that uh, swarm on you, all kinds of things are possible. You know, let's let's do that right now. We, I think we've nailed that the Elysium's pretty good. What we're going to use. Um, so the creative team, Sid, can you hear me? She can hear you again. She said it a while back. She couldn't she just, hear. She couldn't hear uh, when uh, when she was unmuted for some reason. No, she unmuted now. Can you hear? Can you talk, Sid? I don't think she Hold on, I'm having some difficulties trying to unmute her. It doesn't want me to. I'm clicking pretty hard on it, and it. <laughs> <laughs> so at least she's not in Wisconsin right now, where it'll be a long drive for you to go fix it. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll be right back. Love you, Nelson. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have Sig come in since she's uh, lead for our character creation. And let's brainstorm some ideas when Mr. Ray said hive. Now, it goes back, is it the chicken or the egg? Did the egg come first? The chicken come first. And if we do one or the other, do we want to draw some hive creatures as creatures? And then we can start utilizing that as armor. I think that's probably be the best way to go instead of doing just armor on people. And go, oh, that's from a hive creature. Does that sound more, I guess, logical, Mr. Ray? Well, I mean, there's so much to do. You could start anywhere. Just keep going. Right. Definitely uh, we, so. We haven't solidified the female look, have we? The adult female? I, I thought we have. Uh, I, I don't, you what, I, my I next, don't remember this, seeing. My next assignment, I will uh, I'll draw image planes for a female for next, next class time. And I'm going to take some of what Eve has suggested and some what uh, Sid has suggested and, and wrap it all into one thing. Uh, Sid really wants to have elongated legs, man. I'm all about those long legs, <laughs> but I want it to be too, too, too long. Um, and we did, we did talk about the head. It won't be as aggressive. It'll be smooth, uh, like uh, Mr. Wolf was talking about. I think that'd be a great idea to do something like that. And so we'll have the female next week image plane. So. Uh, we can start modeling. Mr. Ray, uh, do you have your model in the, in the Tumblr uh, thing? Can yeah. you take this? Can we take? Can you t uh, I don't know if Mr. Nelson's back. If you want to. Miss William here. You want to take my screen? Yeah, I can show. I can even uh, show you how it, it's rigged. Okay. As soon as uh, Mr. Nelson gets back, we'll do that. Okay. Talk about that a little bit, and then we'll start jumping into. Uh, the hive ideas, what sort of monsters we want. Because again, I really think we have the Elysians pretty much nailed down the different regions. Um, while, I, while I do this, and I, I need Sid's permission, not permission, because I'm the art director. <laughs> but I, we need to start giving up some more ideas. I, I want to nail down uh, mountainous people, what they look like, uh, plains people, and the forest people, and then uh, I guess underwater and a fire area. So that's five characters. And basically all we need are the heads right now. Actually, we don't need the heads and the bodies. But that way we have a baseline of what they all look like because they're distinct enough to make things a little bit more different. And then we can design the armor around each one of the regions that what creatures they may find in that region. So you're right, Mr. Ray, we got a ton of work. And with that, everybody listening right now, pre-recorded right now, we need more artists. Uh, we need more art people to help uh, make this game because we have a huge, huge announcement coming up next week. Uh, <laughs> I really want to. I, I can't. I want to. I really, really, really want to. And I'm, I'm pinching myself very hard not to do it. But once this is announced, I think it's going to spur more people on. Like, oh, my God, this is really happening. And, guys, I haven't seen Buzz as excited in a long time. Nelson is even excited about this. And, I don't know if you've Nelson seen any of the, Nelson, I don't know if you've seen any of the group pictures of uh, 
the buzz cave when everyone's acting like jackasses. They're like, make faces. We're like, no! Nah! And Steve's kissing the camera and doing silly stuff. Nelson's just standing there. <laughs> hello? He just, hello? Hey. Hey, Chelsea. I'm Sid. Good evening. How you doing? <laughs> Good night. I can't believe I screwed up your name again after spending like a week with you. It happens. Okay, so to recap what we're doing, we're well, actually we're able to listen to all my ideas that I just threw out there about, you know, we need all five settings uh, from uh, the plains, the mountains, fire region, water, and I think mountains. We need those five looks for women nailed down. And then I want to start working with armor, but like the creature in my screen right now, uh, let's go with some sort of organic look where they can, you can actually farm in the game and utilize crafting to start building these things. So uh, what I want to do is I want Mr. Ray to show us, it, it, it is cool, I got to see it the other day, his Alethean that he's got rigged up and all ready to move. And then we come back, I, I want your ideas, Miss uh, Sydney, to see uh, what creatures we should work with first. Uh, I like the hive idea. Hold on. Can I ask something real quick? Yes, sir. The, uh, did you record uh, the the meeting with Jason? Uh, he did a little bit with his phone. He wasn't set up with everything right away, so I'm hoping when it's back from California, he's going to be able to post some of it. Okay. All right, Mr. Ray, fabulous job on the model, dude. Can you see it? We can see it. He's bending, bending down. Good job on uh, skinning and rigging the the knees. I don't see any deformers in there, though. Blender, they don't need deformers to or, or weight painting. Well, that's all in there. Uh, these are you hide that. You just show these guys. Okay, gotcha. So, so that's how you move things around. Uh, Very good. And grab the hand and move it around. Uh, I love his stomach muscles, man. Now, if you, um, so it has IK, so you can move the feet around. But if you uh, don't deliberately move them, then they stay in place. Good. And uh, this software is absolutely free. I can put this file up for anybody who wants, and they can bring this in and play with it. Uh, it won't cost you a dime. I like it. Cheap is good, but free is always better. Yeah. And then, you know, you can uh, you do things like point the knee. Uh, now, do you have a roll attribute for the, the foot? Because I'm really anxious to see how we're going to utilize that. Oh, sweet. Well done. Yeah, and I know this. Go ahead, Mr. Ray. No, this, uh, this rig has pretty much uh, everything. Uh, you want to do this, look what you, you can make him do. Mr. Ray, you're turning me on doing that, you sexy beast, you. <laughs> and then you can fix it so you only see what's rendering when you're doing this. <laughs> now, with the game, we don't really need any facial blends. We're not going to move the mouth around. Uh, I didn't do anything on the rigging on the face, just the, the head and the neck, so that uh, you, know, you, can, you can move those around. The one thing I would add that I don't see, and you probably don't think about it, and again, I don't want to overburden anyone's computer playing the game, and I know we're not Blizzard, but every now and then, because I play Night Elves and they have those big-ass ears, you'll actually see them shake. I don't know if you want to would put bones in there, or... Oh, yeah, easier. You, could, you could do that. Uh, this thing only has 2,300 faces. It's not bad at all. Hours, so it's, it's not too bad. How is that, Mr. Nelson? Do, would we need to go down a lot more? Um, no. Um, we haven't really talked about um, the quality requirements quite yet, but uh, that, I mean, you know, tossing a, a normal map or something, get the pixel, or the vertex count down, I'm sure it'll be fine. 
This, it's okay, this, good. Has, a, this has a normal what? map. The original model was 230,000. Uh, this is 2,300. All right, awesome. Wow. With the normal map. One thing I'd like to see is uh, bendable uh, toes that could wrap around things. I don't have bendable toes, but that could be done. Yeah, that would be really easy. This is like uh, the fingers. The way you, the way you, you do it the same way you work the fingers. So uh, with the fingers work like this. Sweet. Now again, even in Warcraft, uh, we don't have movable fingers. It's very static. Uh, I don't know if we want to utilize it. I think it would be great if we could. I think it would be really great because it adds another, uh, I guess, suspension of belief or this this suspension of belief. At, at least in cutscenes or something when the. Oh yeah, or even like uh, sitting animations. You know, backslash S I T enter when they sit. If they sit on the edge of a chair, they sit someplace. Uh, it may go into the model. I mean, there's just a lot of different aspects technically that Nelson and his team are going to have to work with to let us know what they want. But I, I'd rather have it in there for them to utilize, to them say, no, we, we don't want it, then we don't use it. Mr. Ray, beautifully, well done. Alrighty, we have um, one person who wants to show the screen. Apparently he has some models built. Okay. Uh, Wayne McGavery. And then after that, a Richard Gamble um, wants to hop in on the call. Roger that. Hello. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Barely. Can you? A little bit higher. Uh, I think I turned my mic down to avoid any. Uh, you sound pretty right now. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is just the male model. I came. I kind of. Kind of refined from, uh, I forget what his name was, the other guy's ideas. Mr. Ray? Yes. I mean, it's nice just a... Nice <laughs> Seriously, Seriously, people who don't model, I had to model a Bigfoot for a movie once, and this is before all the, the fur and dynamics were, were on it. And to get his butt cheeks looking good? Yeah. It's pretty tough. Kind of a weird foot idea. I like it, but again, I, th I think we got the nail nailed where it's gonna, they're going to be walking on their tiptoes. But I like that idea. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah, I was trying to go with something that would be easier to animate, something that didn't look like they were walking on their tippy toes, uh, unbalanced. But I think it kind of looks a little too much like he's on high heels. Yeah. But. And then the same way if we're, we're thinking utilitarian about our models and our, our concept art. Okay, they are on their tippy toes, but their head is natural counter, count, counterbalance. So that hopefully that won't, I mean, we can logically explain it that way. I've also got... Give it a second to load. And no worries. Kind of a more of a female look on the face. I like the neck, the striations in the neck, very low body fat. I like that. Enlarge the ears a little bit on the on this model. Very interesting. Now what program are you using? Max? Uh Mudbox. Oh, Mudbox. More of a sculpting. I use Mudbox and Maya. Okay. I'm a Maya guy, but if this program that Ray has is free and I can understand it and learn it relatively quickly, I'll be switching. Yes. Well, my idea is, I mean, I love Maya. I, I, I got trained at the Renaissance Center under Jason Busby, three-month intensive course. I loved it. The main but reason why I went ahead and bought uh, Mudbox is you can just send to Maya. Okay. Well, my idea is if we're going to have a lot of artists on this, because, I mean, not everyone can afford a yes. Maya yeah. package. Or I don't want to have to say, okay, to be part of the art team, you need to go spend X, Y, and Z. So whatever free programs that are good out, is out there, I definitely want to utilize. Yeah, I don't blame you there. <laughs> we already have some Blender training. Good. On the yes, side. Yes, Miss Eve. Um, uh, yeah, because my uh, all the Autodesk stuff in Adobe, <clears throat> if you register as a student, you can uh, get it. Well, for free, as long as 
it's it's not commercially used. I don't, don't know how, how it's uh, used, but because I did a course in SAI on modeling, uh, and I was registered as a student there, I could get all of the software packages from Adobe and Automax for free. Nice. Also, I don't know. Go ahead. I don't know if anybody's messed with a program called uh, Substance Designer. Not I. Uh, it's kind of it's a procedural program for texturing that is very compatible with Unity. Uh, it might be something to look into. That way we can change uh, texture designs on the fly, change resolution on the fly. And if I'm correct, Mr. Nelson, we're going to be using Unity, yes? Yes. Okay, so uh, the program Mr. Ray was talking about, uh, Blender, yes? Uh, Blender files can go directly into Unity. Awesome, that's what I was worried about. All right, well done. And tell you what, it's already the top of the hour, so what we'll do is we'll take a five, maybe eight minute break to get a drink. When we come back, I want Sid in here, and uh, let's start talking about hive ideas, monsters, um, making very uh, armored up. Uh, we can get some reference material from Google on different insects and stuff. And let's start talking about that. Then we'll start divvying up the work about evil have to do. <laughs> some of the, the designs for the, the, the regions where they're at. Then we get monsters starting to design. Then we'll tie that all into armor. So let's take a five, seven minute break and we'll be right back. Hey everybody, I'm back. Hope you guys had a good break. I personally clear cut uh, five miles with a... Uh, with a toothbrush, shaved it down really sharp, got all the trees and lumber, stacked them up, so I have some firewood for next winter on the break. I'm not sure what Mr. Nielsen did this time. I think Sid redid her hair, set it in curlers, three or four different looks, but we all had a great break. And now let's do a back to business for the MMO class. You said someone else wanted to be in, Mr. Nelson. Yep. And he should be unmuted now. You guys Hello. How do you hear me? We can hear you. There's an echo, but we can hear you. Okay, give me one sec. It's not you, it's Sid. Okay, that's better. Had, uh, All right, so what's up, my friend? A frog in my throat. Um, well, I kind of got ambushed by work and work and work and more work, so I didn't really get a whole lot done this week, but I just wanted to say you guys did an excellent job with the models. I was blown away when I saw them. That is, thank you. That was really nice of you to say, and I agree. Totally agree. Hey, Sid, you know, you can you can mute while you're not talking. That's usually what I do. Stop the echo. Testing one, two, three. Sid, it's like that son of a gun, Derek. I was doing something in Photoshop and I haven't been able to talk early at all yet. Sorry, old bean. All right, so what else you got uh, for us, sir? Uh, well, I like the idea of doing the, uh, the creature concepts. That picture there is pretty sweet looking. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, we definitely, I think it's logical. Like Mr. Ray said, we have tons to do. But I think it is logical to, to start out that way. And I noticed the, uh, like the common element with how the, the, like the structure of the hind legs and stuff like that that they have in common with the Alethians. It's a pretty neat touch. That was a happy accident. Oh. <laughs> but I like that you, you noticed that, and that now that you said that. Ah, I can see that. I mean, of course, I planned that out. Even <laughs> our talking about that, she's like, this is how you should do this. Of course. Of course, happy accidents. Did you see that uh, one... Um picture I sh uh, sent you via Dropbox on Facebook uh, late last night? No, no. take the yeah, screen and you can show it. I'm basically ready here with the armor I did beforehand. It's now, I think, more clearly visible than before. All right, so, let me uh, get your screen real quick. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Thanks. Um, I tried uh, to change the shoulder pads, a bit, uh, shoulder pads a bit to match um, the hand. Ooh, I like it. To be more spiky. It's not round, but it's not super spiky. That looks, that's a good touch. 
Yeah, um, like I've said, uh, lots and lots of references. Um, yeah, basically what I sent you uh, yesterday, because um, we were talking about creature designs, um, was that, for example. Because we're basically uh, talking about plants. I know, I got that email. Oh my god, that looks great. <laughs> the penguins. Yeah, the, the, those um, that are basically as big as um, as the Elysians, <laughs> or even bigger. The sand penguins strike back. I think I, I uh, make them um, have longer legs because basically if they're in the sand and deserts, uh, longer legs would be uh, more appropriate than that. Yeah? Is, the th is the theory of the penguin, the sand penguin mounts uh, in case you want to get someplace slower than walking? No, why? Because they can basically um, slide. Out. Yeah, slide I know. Sl have... Slide downhill. If it's downhill, they get there pretty fast. Well, then but with longer legs, it can be you know faster. Yeah. Then yeah. you can buy just like in World of Warcraft, you have a standard speed that you move, and more levels you can move at this, and you get this. And that's freaking cute as crap, man. I like that. There's another quick transition of kind of a you know cat-like feline. Oh, that's how I, I perceive the Alethians riding on something aggressive and beautiful like that. Here you have a chupacabra bag. I, uh, I took the concept from, I think it was sci-fi class. I mixed it up a, a bit for monster design. It's not uh, um, in any way finished or set in stone. It's just some ideas I was playing with for monsters. But I love the idea of a chupacabra. I mean, because I have a, a guy that goes works with my father-in-law, and he swears they're around here in North Carolina. He and he he'll go chupacabra hunting. So they call him the Chup. Come on, yeah. Chup. So, I think we can throw in pet racing. Hell, why not pet racing? I'd put the little babies in sand and have them race if I was able to do it. <laughs> you guys ever seen Kong Pao with the babies like rolling down the hill? What? There you go, baby. Be free. Ah. Oh my I really gosh! I had totally forgotten about that. Thank you. You're quite welcome. I really wouldn't do that. Okay, we need to talk about some hive creatures, Mr. Ray. Yes. Hive creatures. What sort of creatures are you envis envisioning? That I mean, that's equivalent to here on Earth, but obviously in Elysia, there'll be a lot bigger. I'm thinking wasp-like creatures, uh, nope. some sort of prey mantis. In in the um the final challenge to our uh, young lady in the uh, first edition of the comic, uh, she finds herself in a box, uh, a rock box with steep walls, and they're insect-like creatures. Uh, you can have how many legs you want that can crawl up and down on the sides. They have stings, and but what they do is they go crawling out of this this is the entrance to the hive, and they they capture alethian creatures, and they paralyze them and bring them back for the queen to feed on while they're still alive. And she finds herself at the bottom of the shaft, leading into their hive, with them on the walls all around her, and she and the beast that she has brought with her, because in the first challenge, her stone took over a beast that was supposed to kill her and made it her pet. So she and the beast have to fight these things off at loud, and she has to fight her way into the center of the hive underground, kill the queen, and teleport out of there, and that's her last thing. So I don't necessarily know exactly what they look like, but they have at least six legs, maybe eight. They uh, can climb along the walls. They have stingers. Cool. They don't maybe. fly, however. Maybe it's something where they they can walk on all six or eight or something like that, but they can use two or four of them to fight with if they need to. Exactly. So let's say they had six legs. They could maybe hold on with four and fight with two, as well as pincers in the front and a stinger in the back. Cool. Good idea. That sounds but suitably freaky. Have yeah. a same feel as the Alethians in terms of angularity or you know just the style
I like that. Good idea. Uh, it's definitely queen, where, uh, it's, queen, sorry, go ahead. The queen would be larger and rounder. Uh, she wouldn't be quite as angular as all the warrior creatures. All right. Well, let's concentrate on that then. Let's uh, bring Sid back in and let her delegate who needs to work on what. How's that? And Mr. what I need from you is I need the first five pages of the comic broken down in the comic book form because we've got to start on the ASAP. We broke down some stuff, but I like the story, how you've written it. But uh, let's get very specific on the panels, panel one, panel two, and I've got to get that to uh, Chelsea ASAP. Okay, so you wanted even more specific than what I posted. Um, I, let me take it back. I've oh, crap my computer. Not seen it. Uh, I've been so busy. Okay, uh, if well, you already have a new rendition, then I'll just tell Chelsea to get there and she's going to start. Well, it's, it hasn't changed, but it, the, the first one that I did, the five, it wasn't down to the very panel, but it was pretty close. So okay. if somebody could look at that and tell me where, how how far I need to take it. I just need some more guidance on that. Okay. We'll do that. Hopefully it'll just work out like that then. I had we'll what's on each page and some panels worked out. Okay. Well, that, that will be good enough then. Uh, Chelsea will start. I think what we're going to do is do first five. I'll do two. She'll do five. I'll do two. And uh, my goal is by the end of the month to have at least eight to nine pages done and ready to go. Okay, past the five, I need to do that. But the first five, I was pretty specific. And then the, the rest of the story for comic one, I made more a narrative. So I need to go into that and get more specific. Okay. The first five, if you need me to, to get more specific, I will. Uh, but I'd like somebody to take a look at that and say, yeah, this is okay. Do the last part of the story the same way, or we need more okay. detail in those sections. I will take care of that and get with you ASAP. Okay. It, 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 Eric, I'm, yes, pretty interest, I'm pretty interested in what uh, Jason said about the environment stuff. Well, I, I don't want to steal Steve's thunder. So okay, Steve just, is here in class, but he loved it all, loved all the ideas. And he wants to push to do a lot more stuff. And when Steve gets back for next class, he'll definitely share what he did for the environment team. But, but Buzz was like, this, is, this stuff is breathtaking and I agree. I, I, I've got a lot of great ideas for environment but I'm, I'm still working on that one. I, I'm, I'm slow because I'm new to it. I'm still like discovering but I, I have really good ideas that I can't wait to show. Awesome. Is Sid here? Hi. Hey Sid. Hey. So uh, I, I got your name right. Yay for me. Um, what do you want us to do? How do you want to delegate powers? And Actually, let me get your take on all the ideas that we've kind of thrown around about some of the basic armor that you've seen, some of the stuff I threw down, and the, the, the hive ideas aspects. What do you think about this for our creature or character designs? Um, I was actually thinking, I like the idea to have all the hive stuff going on. I was actually thinking because you discussed having dragon theme armor mm -hmm. and um, with the Elysians being more friendly towards the dragon, I was thinking we could have people in the art team try and do at least three um, insect designs, whether they be queen or lower class insects, and then do at least two armor designs based off of the insect. Okay. We, could do that. we can do that. Uh, I'll get the female Elysian. Uh, image planes done and at least one design. Eve, are you up for a challenge? Sure. Oh, by the way, since you're here, Mr. Wolf, uh, we've talked about, because I want the pages to be colored and everything, and I want you to color the comic book pages. you up for that? Sure. Good. All right, good, because we were hoping you were. Otherwise, yeah. we'd have to hunt you down and drag you the 3D above cave to beat you. Oh, okay, let's try that. All right. Oh. Sid? Get a plane ticket. I'll meet you there. <laughs> so, all right, cool. So uh, we're going to do that aspect of it. Um, that's good. Any any insects in particular you want us to try to start basing some of this armor off or creatures and all that stuff off of? Um, I'm thinking this may sound weird, but a cross between a crab and a wasp. In other words, I think the wasp is too streamlined and the crab isn't threatening enough. 
if that makes any sense. I, I'm imagining something that um, has sort of crab-like legs, but a wasp-like body. And will they fly? Well, I guess we can vary it up. Some can fly, some cannot. But that's kind of, I'd rather do something like that, a cross between something, so it looks familiar, but yet alien. And, and if I could add one thing on the comic, uh, what I'm thinking is if we get the art down first, then we can look at what is shown with the art and we can decide what the final captions and dialogue should be because much of the story will be told just by what we see. So we don't have to put anything in a caption that is obvious from the art. Well, we can do that. There's there's different ways of doing that with either thought bubbles or different boxes that we can say this and this is going on as opposed to chat bubbles. Yeah. But there's things going on right now outside what I'm telling you and cannot tell you that we need to get visual stuff done very soon. So uh, Chelsea will be getting a hold of you. Sid, okay. call her or I will call her. And it's got to, got to start ASAP. Okay. Um, a quick uh, question, when you, uh, Ray, when you talk about crab legs, you want pincers or really legs? Because um, when, uh, for example, they have, uh, would have pincers uh, in the front to be able to attack, um, I don't think how feasible it would be to have them walk um, on all six sixes on the floor. Basically, like, uh, for example, scorpions um, to have uh, those pincers more up, kind of up here. So maybe if they have uh, eight, eight uh, legs or six legs and two arms of some sort. That it Very is. good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good point, Eve. Very that, good. That sounds right on. So um, uh, six legs and some kind of pincers in the front. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, another thing that we have in this story, now Chelsea had already talked to me about the beast that she ends up adopting in the, the, first, uh, the first challenge, and I had told her and sent her some pictures of the Tasmanian devil because I thought an alethianized version of that might work because when they open their mouths, it's really uh, pretty impressive that all the fangs that they have. Uh, but we also have in the very first challenge what I called sea vultures. These are creatures that live uh, in Alethian waters that wait for things to die on the beaches. And then they, they swarm and pull them into the water and they're essentially like vultures. So they're in the, they're in the part of the story, the first challenge. So if somebody wants to try and come up with what a sea vulture looks like, uh, on Alethia. Uh, that might be interesting. All right. So uh, we're quickly getting, I don't want to overload the art team here, but uh, as I hit my microphone, sorry about that. Hey, uh, Mr. Nelson, look to see if anybody's hands are up. I need some more volunteers. Any of you guys and gals listening right now interested in being part of the art team? Raise your hands so we can talk to you a little bit and uh, get some good stuff from you. Uh, I uh, uh, actually had an idea for, well, if you don't, if the work was too much, if you didn't want to do insect design or armor design, if you're into environment stuff, if you would want to work on maybe some kind of hive design or an area that a lot of insect creatures would be located, because I'm sure that could be used in the game. Did you catch that wolf? Is Wolf still here? Uh, no, I did not. Did, did, she wants I, to know if instead of doing insect that. designs, but design the actual hive environmentally, what it would look like on in the inside and outside. Huh. Well, that that probably depends on how how big are the insects. Yeah, Mister, how how big do you want the insects to be? Uh, I would say uh, a size of uh, a small. Uh, a Shetland pony. Okay. I'm envisioning her at the bottom of a very of a good-sized 
uh, shaft straight down into the rock. She's at the bottom. They they trend, they teleport her there. There's no way out except climbing sheer walls, which she can't do, or going into the tunnel, which is at the bottom of the shaft, and going through the underground maze of the hive to the queen's chamber, killing the queen. And if she does that, then they'll teleport her back out. That's her last challenge. So she okay. starts out at the bottom of this rough rock shaft with creatures hanging off the walls around her. And she has to fight them off, fight more of them as she goes through the tunnels into that chamber. So that's that's the environment we need for that part of the thing. The, the sh at the bottom of the shaft, the tunnels she fights through, and the queen's chamber. So, uh, it would help to know more about the insects. Are they are they more ant like? Are they more are they bee like? They're going to be the if I'm correct. He wants the, the cross between the crab and a wasp, correct? But the size of a Shetland pony. It's like uh, huh. it's trying trying to think what what they would need for for their hive. Like, what would they what would they do that what would they eat <laughs> would they make honey <laughs> you know, right. what about maybe um, a mix between um, those classic wasp um, hexagons I don't, I don't know the honeycomb the honeycombs and kind of uh, those crustaceous uh, areas under the water where um, actually crabs live like uh, this kind of corals and kind of cave like um, uh, environments well, that where smaller crabs and um, stuff like that live, so kind of a mix of, of the coral like. Yeah, maybe uh, I was thinking, uh, you know, aliens, they did something like that. They had uh, in the aliens movie. Uh, oh, yeah. They, yeah. they had, they made it's all kind of a slimy thing, you know, they, they'd make it their own kind of environment. Uh, and yeah, so. I think Nelson, oh, how about this? Have... Go and take my screen, Mr. Nelson. Uh, in Mass Effect 2, you have the collector's ship, which is also kind of a mix between kind of insect, hive, and other stuff. I think Alien is uh, really appropriate. Uh, they were um, taking inspiration from uh, the movie series as well. And um, yeah, it's kind of really kind of squishy and disgusting looking. And those collectors are also kind of insect like, so that may be um, also kind of a reference. Did anybody uh, play Oblivion, the uh, yes. Elder Scroll? Yes. That, that, they, that they had uh, that other um, universe dimension thing, whatever they, they portaled uh -huh. to. Um, and some of like the inside places they had uh i don't know it it, it looked uh, uh kind of s similar to like the structures were kind of uh more organic or something like red okay yeah, kind of, uh, those uh, were oblivion gates so i think it was kind of oblivion dimension but i know what you mean is kind of a really organic mix and kind of i don't think hellish but they had some of uh, skin-like membranes as uh, stores, and when I remembered correctly, a lot of fire and brimstone. How, how intelligent are these uh, ant uh, people? I mean, they, would they be intelligent enough to kind of, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, the, here, the structure the, so that... Here's the situation. Ahead. Uh, the queen, all of this takes place enclosed. We don't see the hive from outside. Uh, it's down inside a mountain. So we just, at least in this part of the story, she's at the bottom of the shaft, and that's all she can see, and then she goes through the tunnels and sees the queen's chamber. So for the initial comic book, that's the part that we see. We don't see outside. Uh, these creatures are enthralled to the queen. They're, they're essentially workers. They go out and capture living Alethean animals, sting them to paralyze them, 
and then bring them in. They have the ability to climb sheer rock walls like many insects do. They bring it down and to the queen and then they feast on the living animals. They want to do this to our heroine and that's what she has to fight them off, kill them and get to the queen before, or else they will do that to her, paralyze her, stick her in front of the queen who uh, will then uh, slowly eat her alive. Uh, but and spiders do this, and wasps do this in the real world. They paralyze so, their victims and then eat them alive. So, so like uh, maybe they they could have uh, more victims than than they necessarily need at any moment, and kind of uh, kind of store them so they need places to yep. kind of store them. You, you, could, you could easily have other Alethian creatures and even Alethian. Uh, people uh, may be bound in a little bit of uh, silk of some sort, you know, like a, uh, a spider would do, or they could just be stacked maybe like cordwood. I don't know. It, but yes, you would definitely, particularly when you get to the queen's chamber, you might see a fair amount of prey. And you could have some, them bringing some down the walls when you start out that part of the story. So you could have the, these creatures on the walls uh, some of them ready to drop on her, others bringing prey to their queen. So uh, when she when she comes in, she's uh, in the story. She's not uh, she's not completely in the hive. She's she's in the like the entrance. No, or, she's uh, at the bottom of a shaft that has yeah. no way out except either climb the sheer rock all the way around. There is, she got teleported in here. It's part right. of her, of her, uh, her challenge. So she didn't climb in here, and there was no, there's no path into there. The only way into the entrance to the tunnel that goes underground is to be able to climb these sheer rock walls that are around this area. So it's a shaft down into the rock. That so, she's at the bottom of. What what are people more more most interest in in see, are they interested in seeing that shaft or inside the um, hive? Well, I'm just saying or for both. the 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 first panel in that part of the comic is going to show her standing there. She suddenly appears here. She looks around. Here are these creatures on the walls. Some of them might have prey with them. She understands very quickly what it is, where she is, and the, the trouble she's in. And she understands fairly quickly she's got to uh, take care of the ones that see her and then go into this tunnel, which will, will be visible, and work her way through the passages till she finds the queen and kills the queen. She's either going to do that or she will become the queen's dinner. Yeah, I'm just talking about uh, for drawing. Derek, what do you think? Uh, inside? I would like to see personally, because I was always a big fan, fan of Geiger, because it's dark and it's creepy. Uh, but I also like the collector's high from Mass Effect. If you could do something, uh, a combination of that. Again, we don't want to rip anybody off, but Geiger has that, oh shit, I'm in a bad spot feeling. And I liked the color palette they used for uh, Mass Effect. I think that could work. You know that Geiger said that his images are basically a visual representation of rape? Yeah. If you look at the face huggers, what does it look like? Hmm. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to, I do not condone that by any means. I just like the visuals. <laughs> <laughs> On my screen right here, really a couple just spot black sketches. I don't, I'm not happy the second one, I like the first one where they're more up at an angle so they can walk and they can work and then they can bend down if they need to get closer to the floor. That's how I'm envisioning them. What, what does the queen look like? Don't know. She's larger, rounder, uh, big, big abdomen. Um, she doesn't move. They bring stuff to her. She was like them when she started out. But just like the queen in... Uh, Earth hives, as she began to spawn, her her 
bottom end got bigger and bigger and bigger, and she became incapable of movement. The only way she can eat is them bring the stuff to her, and then she creates more of them. And, uh, and so you're saying the queen's got junk in her trunk. <laughs> yeah. So, so she's in the middle. She has um, helped create it, uh, but she no longer does anything except reproduce and eat. So that there'll probably be a place for egg storage and food storage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that, that, that that should probably be the focus, the, the queen's den. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the, the visual story, we got to show the shaft. We have to show something in the tunnels. And then the oh, very quickly, one would get to the, uh, the queen's chamber, and you probably have two or three panels involving the queen's chamber. Uh, there has to be enough room for her and her beast, which is going to be probably about the size of a tiger. Yeah, uh, I think it's probably a, a pretty big space, actually. Yeah, so there's, there's our Alethean female and an animal about the size of a tiger uh, going through all of this. And since these creatures themselves are about the size of a Ch Ch Shetland pony, you would think their tunnels would be big enough for them to at least have one going in each direction, and maybe might be three across. And also we have to think about their food sources. If they're dragging in like that little red creature guy I drew, I'm envisioning it like as big as the freaking rhino. And you know, I'm sure like five or six of those guys would probably be able to kill it. So I would definitely make the tunnels big enough to get some large prey down there. Or not prey, but large pieces of food. Good point. They have to be able to bring in a large... Uh... So I'm anxious to see what you can come up with. Uh, Ray, I had a question about the sea vultures. Uh, were there actually kind of um, birds that are uh, flying or um, creatures that are basically no, no, underwater? The sea, sea vultures are completely aquatic. I just use the term vulture because that's okay. their function, but they don't actually so, fly. They don't necessarily so, look at all like earth vultures. Are they amphibian or? They're in, they are amphibian. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they don't necessarily spend a lot of time on land. The little time they spend on land is to get something dead and drag it into the water. Uh, and I'm envisioning that they, a swarm of them start attacking. What happens is she uh, overcomes this assassin whose uh, job it is to kill her in her first challenge. And as soon as the assassin is dead, the sea vultures know that this island is where one of these people is going to die. And they're just waiting to figure out which one it is. And as soon as that, that person is dead, they drag it to the in, just barely into the water and start feasting on it. That's what I have in, in my mental image. But mm -hmm. they are strictly aquatic and slightly amphibious. Because uh, I don't know if you um, know this uh it's a kind of flying dinosaur, it's, um, but uh, they basically don't have, they have teeth in their, <clears throat> in their kind of big beaks or something like that. And uh, much like, um, for example, um, seagulls uh, ate fish. I don't know if you saw the sketch uh, I did while my, uh, I had screen sharing with this kind of really elongated kind of... Um, it's a penguin or cross between penguin, dinosaur, and fish-like um, bird creature with um, teeth in the beak. Cool. That is something uh, more along the lines you're thinking or if it was um, totally... Nelson, if you can take her screen real quick, go ahead and do that. So. Uh, pterodactyl. Whatever they are, they're ugly. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually the pterodactyl, there are many uh, different, and one of those had um, um, probably more, but yeah, had uh, teeth in their beaks. Oh, too close. Or if it's something that you totally um, c couldn't um, stand behind and want something different, because it's just a first idea. 
I, I like the look, but I'd rather they had uh, forearms with claws instead of wings and webbed feet. And, uh, wet feet? Web. Web, web feet, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I, I didn't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we say in English, web feet. Yeah. The space so was you like the beaks? Sorry. Oh, I think those beaks are lovely. Uh, you know, great for ripping and tearing. And but I, you know, I rather than as a bird, more lizardy with four arms, with claws. They're, they're going to drag uh, this uh, dead person into the water and tear it to shreds. Okay, I try to work it uh, in because, like I said, it's the first draft and. Um, if there's something you like, I keep it. The rest uh, goes out the window, or uh, is reused for another monster design or something. So yeah, that was basically um, my question. Thanks for answering. Those are lo lovely, vicious-looking creatures. So, Thank you. So you want it to only attack dead creatures? No. Yeah, it, it, it's so, like what in Texas when I lived there they called buzzards luck. You can't kill nothing that ain't nothing ready to die. They only eat dead things. So they, just like vultures, they hang around, they, they wait in places where they know things are going to die, and that's the only way they eat. They're scavengers, hyenas, vultures, that, that kind of creature. In that case, they should, they should be very thin, and uh, they, should, they should not look like they can take down a creature. They should well, hyenas look fragile. Scavengers and, and they, but they can also take down. Yeah, yeah. But this, but this I think looks looks pretty decent. Because Good. the idea was they have to be kind of quick in the water and kind of if there is something dead in uh, in the water on the water line swimming, they just grab it uh, with the with those big beaks, um, similar like pelicans, um, but without the big uh, sack where they kind of eat the fish. Uh, with those, they they uh, can next. live in the, in the water. They they are aquatic creatures. They aren't birds. I, I use yeah. the word vulture because of their yeah no no do. yeah that was uh, just because uh, be they have to be kind of uh, stream uh, when they're swimming. I try to keep the form of them really thin and really agile in the water. Yeah. Nothing about but I, I was uh, just talking about the beak basically when they. Um, I don't know, it's a pelican? It's a big bird with this kind of... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't see them having it. I like the beaks the way you have them. Okay. They're, they're ripping and tearing. Uh, and I think they, they need it uh, completely strong all the way back to the jaw. Okay. They are the pelican swallow fish hole. These guys rip and tear their, their dinner. Okay. Good job. Well, we got some really good stuff, uh, I guess, lined out. Sid, any comments on you? We'll start wrapping this stuff up. Um, I was thinking if, since he was talking about how the map word was at all, if maybe this one of these is an alligator as well, but you can apply it to it. I didn't understand the Yes, yeah, Sagan, you're really low. I'm sorry. Really low? Um, I don't know how to change that. Yeah, I, I, I would your sense. The head on this creature with maybe a caiman like body would work. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So you got the art notes then, Miss Eve? Yes. Brilliant. We got a lot of work to do. Uh, I will take the image planes of the Lethian chick, and I will do the the blah 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 the foresty type Lethian look, male and female, and maybe one ant creature. And then, what do you want to take, Miss Eve? Mm, you take the ant because I wasn't kind of paying attention right now. Okay, I'll, I'll do I'll do the ant thing for the hive then, and you work on these two things. On what? Like I said, I kind of was uh, concentrating on uh, 
writing down the notes and I was kind of not paying attention to what you said. <laughs> Silly girl, at least you're honest. Uh, Sid makes fun of me because I write notes and I forget them too. Um, why don't you take these two creature designs and give me a uh, mountainous look? Uh, we actually already have mountain people already done. You have fire people done that I like. Uh, we need a desert person for you, and I'll do the forest person. Okay, desert, uh, desert design. For the I'll do the forest, the uh, ant, and yeah, the image planes. Sid, what do you want uh, Wolf to work on? I would like Wolf to do his own adaptation of at the least hive. two insects and then apply what he can stop if it be for them. Okay, you cool with that, Mr. Wolf? I heard two insects. Two insects Wait. in the hive. Two insects in the hive? Yes. Okay. And the next time we talk, I'll show my insect your two insects. We'll, we'll borrow it down to what we need, what we like, don't like. That way we should have something concrete by next week. And the same thing with the hive. Then we'll have all the looks for all the Aletheans, every sort of environment. And then we can start concentrating more on armor from uh, our hive creatures that we're going to like take from them. You want to keep the one I did um, at the beginning of the session? Then crop oh. it out and send it to Sid later. Yeah, we can do that. Oh. Okay. Derek, uh, what did uh, uh, Jason think about um, hair and stuff? He likes all the ideas uh, with all, like he said, with the hair that's going on. Uh, that was a very specific question that he didn't really get into. He just liked the looks of it. Uh, okay. I kind of like the idea. I love the hair in all the males. I'm going to stick with that. But I also like having different looks, different hair features from the different regions as well. Uh, uh -huh. But keeping more of that, that bold pattern for the males. Not like you need Rogaine. That's just what they are, and they're manly. Right. But that way we can make the women beautiful with flowers and flora and stuff like that. You're thinking more hair on the women? Or, or just, like the kind of the kind of uh, 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 less hair uh, like that I was doing. I, I want to do a combination. That way we can okay. uh, give hopefully the players more of a choice. Okay. And Mr. Nelson, let me ask you something, sir. Yo. Would it be easier for us to keep them bald? for the game, or can we throw some hair and stuff on them like that, or just, would it be easier for just bits of hair? Um, I don't want to weigh down the engine, because we can always put NPCs with that sort of stuff. Well, bald is always going to be easier to render, because I imagine if you have hair, you want to introduce dynamics into it. Um, not necessarily. Uh, you, you can do, uh, for games, what they generally do is uh, planes that look sort of like a leaf that have an alpha on them, so that it looks and then they layer those on the head. And they don't, unless you have something with long hair, but that would be very difficult to do in a game, I would think. But if you just have a head of hair, they use these little image planes that look like hair with an alpha map one. Sure, that would work okay, for, so for static. Um, but, well, I, but the way that I was imagining the hair would be looking is those long, um, those long uh, ponytails. That had been drawn before. That's what I was thinking of, and that's that would you probably want to introduce dynamics for that. Yeah, I mean, it it, it wouldn't have to be like the different strands of hair. I mean, that's that could be. I mean, the ponytail would move in like one. Um, uh, you know, one. Uh, well, sure, it's, it's far from impossible. Uh, they called. Articulate. Like I said, it's All right. impossible. All right, we have a plan, and that's what we need. Any last-minute thoughts? We have any questions from anybody to uh, comment? Nope, doesn't look like it. Um, we don't have any hands raised. Okay, then uh, we will call it here. We have tons of stuff we've got to get busy on. Everybody has their assignments. Everyone's going to do great. And uh, we'll call it.
I was really proud of the art team, and Jason is too. And this is all going to coalesce in a very big announcement coming up in a week or two weeks. I've got a quick question. Okay. Uh, where are you going to post the image planes on 3D Buzz, or where are you going to post those? Yeah, I'll post them on 3D Buzz. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the male Elysians are there, aren't they? No, no they were I never there. I haven't what? seen them. Okay, then I got to get them on there. I'm making a note right now to uh, do that. I will get them on there tonight before I go to bed. That would be great. Okay, cool. Uh, again, well done, ladies and gentlemen. Very anxious to see what you guys come up with for next week. As always, work hard, dream big, keep your feet on the ground and your ankles slightly above them. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay.